A mysterious snowfall in July. In July 1945, the people of New Mexico witnessed a rare and bewildering event, snowfall in the middle of summer. At first, locals assumed it was just an unusual weather phenomenon, but as the years went by, it became evident that this mysterious snowfall was far more sinister. It was the harbinger of a tragedy that would claim the lives of many. Barbara Kent was just 13 years old when the snow fell. As on most summer days, she and her friends were swimming and playing in the local river, blissfully unaware of what was about to happen. We were all just shocked, Barbara later recounted, noting the unusual event that began that day. All of a sudden, there was this big cloud overhead and lights in the sky. It even hurt our eyes when we looked up. The whole sky turned strange. Excitement filled the air as the snow began to fall hours later. The children, thrilled by the unexpected summer snow, had no idea of the peril it brought with it. We were grabbing all of this white, which we thought was snow, and we were putting it all over our faces, Barbara recounted. But the strange thing was, instead of being cold like snow, it was hot. We thought, well, the reason it's hot is because it's summer. We were just 13 years old. Unbeknownst to Barbara and her friends, they were playing with heavily irradiated ash, the fallout from the Trinity test. Earlier that day, at 5.29 a.m., just 40 miles upstream from Barbara's summer camp, the Manhattan Project had carried out the first detonation of a nuclear weapon. The explosion was a milestone in scientific achievement, but a catastrophe for the unsuspecting residents nearby. Barbara was the only one among her friends to live beyond the age of 40. The rest succumbed to cancer and various illnesses, their lives cut short by the invisible poison they had unknowingly embraced. No warnings had been given to the local residents, some of whom lived a mere 12 miles from the explosion. They had not been evacuated, nor had any protective measures been implemented. The authorities, it seems, were more concerned with maintaining secrecy than safeguarding human lives. Decades later, the survivors and their descendants, known as the Downwinders, continued to seek justice and compensation. Barbara lived into her 80s, enduring numerous bouts of cancer. However, authorities remained steadfast in denying any culpability. The Nanda Devi Device A massive flood ravaged local villages high in the Indian Himalayas in February 2021. The water cascaded through a canyon with such force that dozens were swept away, homes were destroyed, and two hydroelectric plants were flooded. Locals claim that the cause of this devastation was far from natural, and instead connected to a buried secret left behind from a covert Cold War operation. Residents of the village of Raini, near the Chinese border and home to Nanda Devi, India's second highest peak, have long maintained that their region is a graveyard of disused nuclear devices. As the floods came, rumors rapidly circulated through Raini that the flooding resulted from one of these buried nuclear devices either exploding or melting snow and ice at an alarming rate. Locals reported pungent smells in the air that accompanied the floodwaters, adding to their suspicions. The origins of this fear trace back to 1965, during the height of Cold War tensions. The People's Republic of China had begun conducting nuclear tests, and the U.S. needed to gauge their progress. In response, the CIA and Indian Intelligence Bureau launched an espionage mission known as the Nanda Devi Plutonium Mission, aiming to spy on the neighboring Chinese Xinjiang province. The mission required installing a nuclear-powered remote sensor on Nanda Devi. However, the mission was ultimately abandoned after a snowstorm buried one of the nuclear devices, along with its eight plutonium capsules. The following year, an expedition sought to recover the antennae and nuclear materials, but they were never found. Official accounts contradict the villagers' claims, proposing instead that a broken glacier caused the flooding, an indirect result of global warming. Yet, no unequivocal proof for this explanation has been presented. The headman of Raini voiced his community's concerns, saying, quote, We think that the devices could have played a role. How could a glacier simply break off in winter? We think the government should investigate and find the devices. More than 50 people lost their lives in the floods. Yet, because Raini is a simple village of farmers, their claims have been largely ignored. Atomic City Love Triangle On January 3, 1961, the small town of Atomic City, Idaho, was shattered by the first fatal nuclear power disaster in American history. 
an experimental U.S. Army nuclear reactor, the Stationary Low Power Reactor No. 1, or SL-1, suffered a catastrophic meltdown. The aftermath was marked by intense investigations, revealing a unique and unsettling catalyst, a three-way romance. The immediate cause of the meltdown was clear. A control rod, designed to absorb neutrons in the reactor core and ensure a safe operation, had been manually withdrawn far beyond its intended limit. Instead of the controlled 10 centimeters, it was pulled out a full half meter. This misstep triggered an uncontrolled fission reaction, melting the core and causing an explosion in just four milliseconds. The reactor logs provided no answers, leaving the intent behind the rod's excessive withdrawal a mystery. Was it a grievous error or deliberate sabotage? What was the operator's motive? One of the most popular theories concerns a love triangle. The three operators at the center of this tragedy were Jack Burns, Richard McKinley, and Richard Legg, all men in their 20s with a known affinity for alcohol. Burns and Legg, in particular, were noted rivals, their conflicts often erupting into physical altercations. The most likely order of events, according to the love triangle theory, is that on the day of the incident, Burns received a call at work from his wife, who threatened him with divorce. This was no idle threat. Burns had been unfaithful and entangled with a local prostitute. Persistent rumors that Legg was sleeping with Burns' wife heightened the already tense situation at the reactor site. Burns, in a fit of rage and despair, deliberately raised the control rod too high, setting off the fatal chain reaction. This act of vengeance not only took his life, but also the lives of his colleagues, McKinley and Legg. It's unlikely that this story will ever be confirmed, but locals and professionals continue to speculate. Three bodies were eventually retrieved, although 790 workers exposed themselves to radiation in the process of cleaning up the disaster. Missing Yellow Cake In November 1968, a seemingly ordinary freighter slipped out of Antwerp Harbor, its cargo concealed beneath the deck. 560 drums of yellow cake, a processed powdered form of uranium ore. This valuable cargo, worth almost $4 million, was en route to Italy. However, it never reached its intended destination. After more than two weeks at sea, the freighter docked in Turkey, and a shocking discovery was made. The 200 tons of yellow cake had vanished. The implications of this disappearance were staggering. Such a quantity of uranium could enable any world power to produce enough plutonium to significantly advance its nuclear weapons program. In the 1960s, Israel faced a formidable obstacle in its quest to develop nuclear weapons, a critical shortage of uranium. The problem intensified after France, a former supplier, refused to provide any more uranium following the Six-Day War in 1967. Desperate to overcome this hurdle, Israel sought alternative sources for yellow cake. Years of investigations eventually revealed the truth. A Belgian mining company had purchased the missing uranium, ostensibly for a chemical company in Milan. In reality, the uranium had been sold to a corporate front from Mossad, the Israeli National Intelligence Agency. In a covert mission known as Operation Plumbat, the uranium was transferred to an Israeli ship at sea and delivered to Israel. The name Plumbat comes from the Latin term for lead, a clever misdirection, as the yellow cake drums were falsely labeled as containing lead. Operation Plumbat was not an isolated incident. In the 1970s, declassified documents exposed another significant theft of weapons-grade uranium from a nuclear facility in Pennsylvania during the 1960s. Known as the Apollo Affair, this case prompted exhaustive FBI investigations, uncovering that between 200 and 600 pounds of highly enriched uranium had been stolen, likely by an employee of the plant. The CIA suspected that this stolen uranium also ended up in the hands of the Israeli nuclear weapons program, contributing to the arsenal that Israel possesses today. SSC X-9 Skyfall In August 2019, a sudden spike in radiation levels was detected in a sparsely populated region of northern Russia. Despite initial efforts at a cover-up, researchers and intelligence officials quickly pointed to a failed test of Russia's elusive SSC X-9 Skyfall missile. The Skyfall, or Boroveshnik, as it's known in Russia, is an experimental cruise missile powered by a miniature nuclear reactor. It's designed to have virtually unlimited range, and is theoretically capable of circumventing traditional missile defenses. On that fateful day, residents near the military testing site in Leonuxa reported a powerful explosion, followed by a rise in radiation levels. The Russian government remained tight-lipped, releasing sparse and often conflicting information. 
Initial reports suggested a routine test had gone awry, but subsequent evidence painted a more disturbing picture. Several scientists from Rosatom, Russia's state nuclear agency, lost their lives, hinting at the presence of radioactive materials. International observers quickly turned their attention to this event. Satellite images revealed the sudden deployment of a specialized nuclear fuel carrier to the site, suggesting the retrieval of a damaged reactor. Russian radiation monitoring stations mysteriously went offline in the days following the incident, leading to speculation about a deliberate cover-up. Despite the secrecy, experts pieced together clues, deducing that the missile likely suffered a catastrophic failure during a launch attempt. One report suggested that the missile came to rest on the seabed, and Russian forces were attempting to recover it when the tragic detonation occurred. This theory aligns with local fishermen's accounts, who reported witnessing a hundred-meter-long column of water thrust into the air and seeing a recovery ship with a gaping hole in its hull. In October 2023, President Vladimir Putin announced that the Skyfall missile was finally successfully tested and ready for deployment. However, intelligence officials remain skeptical. Should the U.S. government have warned more residents about the Trinity test, or was it too much of a risk? Let me know in the comments. As always, thank you for watching Dark Five. Like and subscribe to continue exploring the greatest mysteries of this world and beyond.